Like going through this experience, it was the most impactful experience that you know I've ever done. It was the hardest, um, but like I said, I would have done it before or, or do it again. Um, I mean, this was it changed who I am to, to my core. It changed my identity. It you know it raised a new waterline. That's I'm never going back. Hey, what's up? I'm Steve Eckert, United States Marine, entrepreneur, and instructor of the project. Welcome to the Project Show. This is a show for men in search of meaningful transformations in their family, fitness, finances, and faith so they can finally discover and have true fulfillment in their lives, achieving this through physical, mental, and emotional hardship and sacrifices to become even better husbands, fathers, entrepreneurs, leaders, and men. I want you to welcome my guest today. This is a graduate from Project Class 004, Ryan Megason. What's going on? Thanks for What's joining up, us. Ryan's here in town. He's going to be a junior instructor for Class 007 tomorrow. So he's volunteered a week out of his time. So appreciate you doing that to come and help us out with the upcoming class. So just let us know who you are, where you're from, what you do. So Ryan Megason, Class 004. Um, I am a regional sales manager back home. I live in uh, about an hour south of Boston. I have a wife, two kids, uh, wife Christina, two kids, uh, Nico and Zena, two and three, and uh, out here, you know, ready to have an unbelievable time. Awesome, good stuff, thanks for joining us. So, as you, as you know, it, through your experience, the project is definitely not for everyone. Most, pretty much 99.999% of men fucking need it, but it is not meant for most people. So, what is it about the project that that, why did you even join up? When you started looking into some stuff, you saw some videos, some read more on it, did some research, whatever you did, what was it that just spoke to you and just grabbed you and shook you up and said, you know what, I need to get involved with this at this point in life? Yeah, so I think I always knew I had more to give. Um, there was a video I saw, I distinctly remember it. It was uh, an Instagram video Beros had posted and it was right before the new year, it was it late 2019? And this video just resonated so deeply with me I, does he he ends the video by saying never peak the best is yet to come motherfucker and that i don't know that really resonated with me um i loved that then i started looking into it more and i, I said you know what fuck it i'm just gonna see what happens and put in an application next thing you know i'm out in sunny california and here i am awesome but, good stuff what were some of the maybe struggles or areas in your life where you felt like you just were in, in, in desperate need of improvement or you just need to level up and need to become even better? What were some of the, the roadblocks, challenges, struggles you were going on in life at that time? So like I said, I, I kind of felt like I always had more. Um, but for me, I was going through, you know, I just had my second kid. Uh, work was absolutely crazy. We it, it was very volatile time at work. We just were announced that we were going to go through a big buyout. Um, so it was crazy at work, crazy at home. And, you know, just it was kind of chaos and didn't, you know, I, I was doing okay. But like I said, I, I felt like I could give more and do better and uh, show up better in a lot of different areas. How old were your two kids when you came into the project? Uh, not even one and uh, two. So one had just turned two and one wasn't even one yet a one-year-old and a two-year-old, and obviously some craziness and chaos going on at work at the time. Yeah. It sounds like craziness and chaos at home with two little, little kids that age. Because this this is the first a point I just want to make because he's bringing this up because I, I literally just, I, I speak to men every day and I hear about that they have a one-year-old or a two-year-old or a newborn at home, but they need to level up because they haven't been a, a good husband, they haven't been a good father, but they can't come and do the project because they have these kids at home, which to me, those are just fucking excuses. He was there with a kid that wasn't even a year old showing up. How did how did your wife possibly handle that dealing with two kids on her own? Like, cause because men tell me every day, yeah, you know, what? they can't do it. They can't do it. Their wives won't let them. How, how did you possibly get away? For with me, that? it was commit first and figure it out later. You know, I've, I'm lucky to have an unbelievable uh, wife. She's extremely supportive. Um, but you know, certainly trying to get over the objection. You know, she she didn't know how much it was. You know, trying to break that mm -hmm. to her uh, it was a little difficult. But she said, "Don't fucking come home a quarter." You know, and that's why I came out here. I'm, I'm fucking better than that. I knew I could show up and be better. Imagine so. that. Imagine you spent all that money, told her you're going, pleaded your case to her, left her home alone with the two little <laughs> wildcats, and you came home a quitter. Imagine that. Uh, Imagine that shit. Yep. Had that right in the back of my head. Honestly, that was one of the, the motivating factors. You know, going through that shit, probably one of the worst, mo you know, through a, any of the bad moments you go through, you're, you're 
on the edge and you know you get family back home the wife and the kids and it's uh so that was your button that though because every every one of us has those moments you start doubting yourself every one of us no matter who you are you have those fucking yeah. moments if you say you don't you're you're a fucking liar really when it comes down to it so you had those moments during the project so all you're thinking in your head is if i go home I left my wife alone with these two little kids. If I go home and a quitter, <laughs> she is going to fuck me up. She yep. will whoop my ass. And yep. that's what kept you going. That's awesome. Good yep. stuff. Yep. That is some good stuff. So, w- all right. So now you got that out of the way. You got over that hurdle. You, you get registered. How long was it before you registered to when your actual class started? How much time did you have? Uh, so let's see. I came out in, I think, March. So, like I said, I saw that video. I then I started poking around. And it was, I think, like right before the new year, 2019 into 2020. I decided... Like I said, commit first, figure it out later. I sent in the application, and honestly, I didn't even think anything was going to come of it. Then I get an email back, and I'm like, oh, shit, this is really happening. Well, I sent- called your bluff, motherfucker. Exactly. So I just went with it and then talked with Aaron, got on the phone with him, and uh, we went back and forth, I think, two days and made it happen. So So how much time did you have to prepare then? Oh, it was uh, January, probably three months. uh, not even that, maybe 60 days. Got it. So, yeah. so in those couple months, once you registered and you had that time to prepare, what, what changes did you just start making right away? How did you start preparing mentally, physically, emotionally? What were you doing uh, preparing for your actual class? So I started uh, reading a lot. There were some you know, prerequisites for reading, started getting into those stuff that I hadn't read yet. Um, I also looked into uh, some Navy SEAL stuff, like going through the Hell Week, like why do those guys like mental... Um, and then you wanted to look into the hardcore stuff. She looked into the Marine Corps stuff. Got it. Got it. <laughs> exactly. Um, I kind of lost my train of thought. but uh, I have that effect on people. So <laughs> don't worry about it. It was about your preparation, what you oh, were doing. Oh, yeah. To so pre- oh, the, I didn't even mention the uh, fitness app. That was a huge help, to be honest. You know, we, we train back at home with a personal trainer, but having that app to go in there um, and rip out, you know, burpee box jumps or whatever you're going to do burpee pull-ups you know it was, it was good to have something there and then did a lot of running get up the cardio and and since it. your class we actually added even more of that we ray and i meet with them every week live on an actual that's coaching awesome. call so yeah, yeah we meet with them to awesome. help them get prepared so for you the project experience started 60 days before it wasn't yeah. a seven you're not paying twelve thousand dollars for 75 hours because again and talking about the the phone calls and the, the men that we speak to out there, they'll they'll tell us, oh, I can't pay that amount just for a, a four-day thing, a four-day mm-hmm. boot camp or something. But you were or literally started getting the benefits before you ever showed up. You start oh, from it, the person you were when you first registered to the person you showed up was already a growth absolutely. A good gap and in there. I want to I want to say something right now. I would have I would do it again, and I would pay more to do it. Period. I mean, and I tell everybody that. Everybody that asks me about it, um, I you know I only tell some certain people about it that I think might be interested in it because it's not for everybody. But uh, for those that I, I talk to, again, I would pay more and I'd do it again, hands down. Awesome stuff. So you did the reading, you did some, some of the fitness training. How else were you either physically, mentally preparing for your upcoming class? Uh, physically, mentally preparing. Um, again, I, I just did a lot of running, to be honest with you. Um, I, I, I knew my cardio had to be at a certain level. Um, and then some, you know, weight training on the weekend, but there wasn't anything. And so you didn't have to do anything. You didn't have to train four or five hours a day. You were just doing some, some running, it, some weightlifting, some body weight stuff. Basic, basic it. training. I, exactly. I was running a couple days a week. Made sure I got my, you know, time for a mile down. You know, mm-hmm. somewhere around seven minutes, and then. Uh, so you didn't have to be a track athlete. You didn't have to be a superhero. You didn't have to be a super athlete, crossfitter, and all this other stuff. Look, no. What do you mean? Look, you're a badass <laughs> motherfucker. You're a badass. No, but you know what I mean. It's like I, I, I'm not, um, I'm not running marathons every other weekend, and I'm not, you know, a professional crossfitter, and uh, you know. So there's a you lesson. Don't have to be. There's a lesson right. That's exactly that. There's a lesson there for you right there that. You don't need to train for six months, eight months, nine months, come to the project. You need a couple of months, if that, depending on where you are, or yeah. if you don't have a ton of weight to lose. Because you don't have to be a super athlete. This isn't a, we're not, the project is not a running club. It's not a, a weightlifting club. You don't have to be in the great, a great super athlete in order to come here. Of course, fitness is one of our pillars, one of the, the four F-bombs, the family, the fitness, the finances, and the faith. You should be strong and healthy and fit as a man to be able to have the endurance and durability to take care of your family, protect your family, have the energy in your work day, but you don't have to be a super fucking athlete to do this. So get that thought out of your head that you have to be at this extreme level. Of course, you want to be at the best level possible. We're going to help get you there to at least have the basic fitness requirements Mm -hmm. to be able to handle the project and make that not be something that 
causes you to quit. But as, as Ryan just said, it took him a couple of months of just going for some runs, getting to the gym, doing some pull-ups, like some you know some body weight stuff. Good good stuff right there. Yeah. All right, so let, let's go into the to the good stuff, the fun stuff. My favorite part of the conversation is during those seventy five hours. What it was the the part that you still to this day probably fucking hated, like that your just least favorite experience moment, whatever it is. What would you say? Evolution. Uh, th- there task. were two things that stick out. I remember going. We were at a uh, at, at a field, and we were doing army crawls up a hill it was mud and you came over and you just keep pouring water on this hill and then we just keep going up and i cannot confirm or deny that this is just <laughs> accusations i don't know anything about that this is all allegedly allegedly <laughs> yeah so uh that that was one of the words and then uh there was another time I won't, I won't get into too many details but um i remember uh having my equilibrium getting completely out of whack and uh feeling like i was gonna throw up so that was uh, that was probably the worst. Got it, got it. And so then, and then from that, what what are some of the moments that sometimes like, those are the ones that you actually li- really just didn't enjoy too much? What were the one, moments where you're looking back now that at the time probably sucked and yeah. suffering that makes now for the the, the things you laugh about with the, your other brothers that you graduated with? The, there was uh, one, and I'm I'm laughing right now just thinking about it, and it was one you probably remember vividly, but uh, there was a burrito thrown at my chest and that I was I do not even know what you're talking about. <laughs> that was uh what the fuck is probably, a burrito bomb? <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. Uh but it exploded on my chest and uh you know what? I that was a very important lesson for me to learn. Um and thank you for that and that you know just looking back. And as you know, as you've noticed <laughs> since then, every single thing has a purpose and happens for a reason. That was and it is the funniest point of the whole the whole thing for you, and we won't go into all the details. We want people to experience things yeah. themselves, but that was your fucking turning point. That was your turning it, point. It was hands down. It was my. It was. Like you were a different. It was fucking human being. You were not even the same fucking Megasin that was there before. You yeah. were not. An, you weren't an improved version of yourself. Literally from bam like that. You were a different yes. fucking man, and, it, and it's carried on till today. How many like, year later almost? Yeah, it was like somebody flipped a switch at that moment, and uh, I distinctly remember it. And obviously, it was you know I was just going, going. I just wanted to get through, get through, get through. Just keep looking in front of me, and then that kind of happened. And it was like you said, there was like a switch. And you don't know, you were the catalyst for your entire team at that point, at that moment that that happened, because that was also a turning point for the entire group, your entire team. Because yes. if you remember, we we got behind, way behind schedule because we had a whole dramatic interaction, and none of this stuff was none of this it stuff was is planned. planned. Right. This just happened where. Is the team on your side? Are they against you? And then that's my job. My job is to push you to the brink and push your team to the brink and find those weak ones and mm-hmm. see, is the team going to turn on them? Are they going to help them? And they were flip-flopping, and it caused a uh, interaction with Ray and I where we were having conflicting thoughts. And it was fucking – It was ama- this was like amazing stuff. You can't stuff. make that up. This was like amazing stuff that happened without yeah. giving too much of the details. Yeah. That was a breakthrough for you just as a, a man in life and just as yeah. a team. You car- From that moment, you don't even realize. That moment, you lifted up the team and carried the team from that point. I don't even know if you ever even realized that. That was a turning point for everyone. Like That was when they you there were indiv- a bunch of individuals that were still unsure, still uncertain, and a little scared. And bam, like that, you fucking transformed and stood up. And it, it brought the team together. You guys bonded and gelled. And, yeah. and the rest is, is next thing you know, you're at a, at a fucking steak dinner graduating in a, in a suit. That's it. Yeah. With your brothers. Yeah. Good stuff. That's fucking awesome. So now, now let's talk about what are some of your, what were some of your favorite things? What are some of the things you actually had fun with, enjoyed, other than getting a chance to spend 75 hours with me and hear this <laughs> lovely fucking voice? Think about it. You well, only had to hear this for 75 hours. Yeah. My kids have to hear it all fucking day, like the 18 hours they're awake. I have to hear this shit fucking 27 <laughs> hours a day because it goes overtime. So what were some of your, your favorite moments? You know what? Favorite moment by far. You're going to hate this, but I thoroughly enjoyed being down on the beach with Ray you know, Navy SEAL training, obviously not the full Hell Week type of stuff, but getting down there, going through our paces in the water. And I could have been, I felt like I could have been down there for hours. I didn't care, you know, how cold it was. Just bring it on. I I just felt like it could have been there for hours. That's awesome stuff. And think about it. Like you, and if you had the wrong mindset at that point and you're sitting there on the beach, you could think of, you could just tell yourself, this sucks. It's miserable. There's sand in my ass crack. You could find every reason why it sucks. Yep. 
But then when you flip the switch and change your whole perspective on just life in general, be like, I'm on the fucking beach in Southern <laughs> California. Look at the waves. I can yeah. hear the fucking air. I see people over there playing, having a good old time. I'm over here getting better with my fucking brothers, transforming my life. Like, this is fucking awesome. This is like art. It's like artwork. <laughs> yeah. Like, when you think about it, you could turn fucking misery into art. That's how you flip. That's how you don't have bad days. That's what causes you not to have bad days, changing your perspective on yeah, things. absolutely. So that's fucking awesome. That, that, that's where you were on the beach. That's some good stuff. So, all right, so you made it to the graduation. That's, that's fucking awesome. Then mm-hmm. what were some of the immediate, the immediate impact that, that, that right away your, your trip home, you already start reflecting on it. And then when you get home, you could immediately implement like right away. You have marching orders that you can plug and play into your life yeah. right off the bat. So first thing for me was date night. Uh, not that my wife's relationship and my, you know, my relationship with my wife was bad, but Uh, it instantly, instantly got better. I instituted date night immediately. I was showing up as a husband better, showing up as a father better. And you're not saying you were bad before that. No, no. The word word that that is is perfect, I'm glad you're bringing that up, is even. I I can, because you can now, even where you are today, you can be an even better husband. You can be an even better father, an even better leader. No matter who the fuck you Mm -hmm. are, you can always be even better. So that's huge right there. Yeah, that was big. I mean, it was, when I came out, it was like, and I know we've talked about this term, but it's like somebody put a new set of glasses on or a new set of lenses and you, and I was a completely different person. Like going through this experience, it was the most impactful experience that you know I've ever done. It was the hardest, uh, but like I said, I would have done it before or, or do it again. Um, I mean, this was, it changed who I am to, to my core. It changed my identity. It, you know, it raised a new water line. That's, I'm never going back. You know, because of that experience. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, th- and that leads to the next question is what are some of the, like that was the immediate impact it had. And the project is designed to make it last a lifetime and have those yeah. aha moments months later, years later, fucking decades later. What are some of the longer term things that you discovered and realized that were the byproducts of maybe lessons you learned in the project, but didn't pop up till later? Because now you, you were in you were in March. Yeah. So we're, we're in Corona all, class. Yeah, we were. You're yeah. near a year. Coming up on <laughs> yeah, a year. Coming Holy up on shit. a year. So we didn't even, it hasn't even been a year yet. But through all the adversity that 2020 was, I had the best year ever business-wise, relationship-wise, family-wise. I, you know, I, I'm not going to brag. Certainly, you know. Uh, brag, it's motherfucker, all, brag. It's all subjective. I made more money uh, than I ever have um, in all the years of my life. I'm not that old, but 2020 was the best year financially, family-wise, uh, fitness-wise, and Faith, you want to talk about four Fs. It was the best, hands down, um, right across the board. And I just keep building on it. During a year when everyone's out there bitching and crying and moaning and complaining and blaming the government and blaming riots and blaming presidents and all this yep. other stuff, you had a fucking kick-ass year. A kick-ass year. That's how you do it. That's yep. some good stuff. That's and, and nice work on that and implementing that stuff because yeah. we can't go home with you and do that stuff for you. You have to take the lessons you learned, the skill sets that you have, and now go apply them and implement right. them. And you did it. So that, that, that's yeah. fucking awesome. Good stuff. So the, what, what was uh, some of the ways that it improved your relationships in your life? Whether it's you're talking about with your wife, your kids, at work, as a leader. How were some of your relationships yeah. impacted? So certainly as a leader, I mean, I had people coming up to me afterwards and they noticed the difference. Like, hey, you're, you know, just saying, hey, uh, you're a little bit different. Or I can tell, like, your confidence level. Um, that was the biggest takeaway for me, you know, just trying to be more self-aware. But... Um, certainly on the leadership aspect, my relationship with my wife definitely improved. Just being more deliberate about things, but also being self-aware um, and taking a step back sometimes and, you know, doing a little check-in on myself. Good stuff. How has, now you're obviously connected w- with the Brotherhood here, the project, the Modern Day Nights, and you're here volunteering a week of your time away from your kids, away from your family. Again, you were just did it less than a year ago. Mm-hmm. You're here again for a week to help out. So you obviously have a, a strong connection to the impact it's made on you and Absolutely. it's going to make on these other guys. How, how is it, how is having this brotherhood kind of impacted your life? What does that mean to you to be part of this and have this support system? You know, I was, I was skeptical going in. Uh, one thing I just want to say is when I was on the phone with Aaron, I think you guys do a really good job at maybe not, you know, letting out everything that it is. And I think that's a really good thing. I was skeptical about like, I didn't want this to be a one and done thing, you know, put it up on my, you know, mantle and it's a trophy. I didn't want that. And Aaron told me it's, it's not that. And, uh, having this brotherhood after the fact, 
it, it's, you know, being connected and staying connected and the videos and Pedro, so you and Ray and all the guys, Matt, um, has certainly, it, it helps you continue to grow. And obviously as the brotherhood grows, um, you know, I look forward to, you know, meeting all the new, you know, guys that go through and see what happens. So Awesome stuff. Good stuff. What, what is something you would say to someone that was in your shoes back when you first started, <clears throat> the, you know, the fears and the doubts and the skepticism that you just, you said you had. Yeah thought of the price, thought of you, your wife telling you you can't do it or, or whatever else, when you know in your heart, like, this is what I fucking need because I have that inner bitch negotiating with me on a daily basis and I need to overcome that. And mm -hmm. even my wife might not understand that, that I need to invest in myself. Like, what else could you possibly invest in than yourself? There's nothing more important when you're at that level. So yeah. what would you say to someone that's in your shoes where you were back then that has those fears, those doubts, that uncertainty that's that thinks – is wondering if the project is for them and they're, they're not really sure. What would, you, what would you say to someone like that? Commit first, figure it out later, period. It, build, a, build a parachute on the way out after you jump out of the yep, plane. It, it'll, you'll figure it out. And if it was, you know, for me, I, that was what I needed to do. I knew I had more. I knew I had more to give. And like, like I said, that video really resonated with me. I, I still have it. I watch it every once in a while. And uh, I don't know. I mean, it, it's just commit first, figure it out later. Awesome, good stuff. Now you're here, obviously, to help out with the class tomorrow. Zero mm -hmm. zero seven. You're gonna, you know, put in some, you know, f pour into those guys also. Yeah. What are three pieces of advice that you would have to give to those gentlemen to make it through this experience, and really to anyone, anyone watching out there that is just having a tough day and needs some pointers on how to get through the shit they're going through, because that's really what this is: learning how to go through shit, learning how to deal with the adversities and roadblocks and struggles that life throws at you. So what, what, what are a couple of things you would tell someone? And so don't get too far ahead of yourself. Um, you know, don't look too far out ahead. The, the pain's only temporary. So, uh, you know, like I said, just don't, don't get too far ahead of yourself. Control what you can control in that situation. Um, other than that, don't fucking quit. Don't fucking quit. Don't make a permanent decision based on temporary emotions. Cause it, I couldn't, I could not live with myself if I fucking quit. I, you know, you come here, you got to go home with the mentality. We've talked about it before. You're going home in a fucking body bag. Like somebody's going to have to rip me out of here. I'm not fucking quitting. And that's the mentality you're going to have. I like it. I like it. Good stuff. So I want to thank you again for coming. Appreciate you coming to help out with, with tomorrow. You guys play such a huge role for us as the instructors behind the scenes. Like we, we wouldn't be, you should have seen it before we had <laughs> junior instructors. It was a fucking mess. We were having to set stuff up, running all over the place. So you guys help out a ton and yeah. you're going to be working and you're going to also be re-experiencing this project now from it. a whole different perspective. You're going to take in so many, probably even more lessons now. So this is a huge opportunity mm -hmm. for you. So I'm excited for what it's going to do for you. So I want to thank you for appreciate joining it. us and we'll see, thank we'll you. see you during the project day right. tomorrow. So if, if you got any bits of wisdom out of this, if you know that you have more to give also, just like Ryan said here, just please like, share, and, and leave some comments down below about this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you know that you can be an even better, an even husband, better, e even better husband, an even better father, and even better man when it comes down to it. That's what the Prodigy Show is all about, finding those meaningful relationships and transformations in your life. So just like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I will talk to you next time. You are fucking awesome. No excuses.